Today's episode, I am at Valley Forge, the winter encampment of the Continental Army in the winter of 1777 to 1778. Um, it's about a hard day's ride, if you ask General Washington, uh, north of Philadelphia. So it's about, I don't know, 20, 30 miles, I believe, north of Philly. And um, Valley Forge is so expansive that I have narrowed down the list because I can't spend all day here, unfortunately. I've narrowed down the list, though. There are four sites that we're gonna check out that gives us a fairly well-rounded, accurate representation of the going-ons that would have been happening during the winter of Valley Forge, as well as the living conditions for the Continental Troops, and um, as well as how we remember Valley Forge and why Valley Forge was so critically important for the Continental Army. Never been to Valley Forge? Valley Forge is a pretty good sized piece of real estate. It's it's pretty large. At one point, the population of Valley Forge rivaled New York, Philadelphia, and Boston. That's how big Valley Forge was. So, once again, I am, as usual, I am short on time. So I have four different spots that we're gonna stop, check out and it gives us a good example of the history and what actually happened here at Valley Forge. The first site we're stopping at is a place called Muhlenberg's Brigade. Now, Brigadier General Peter Muhlenberg uh, was here at Valley Forge with his men, and the log huts that we see are accurate and great representations of the log huts that the men here at Valley Forge uh, would have built. And now, interestingly enough, the site of Muhlenberg's Brigade was also kind of near the, the outer perimeter of Valley Forge as a defensive uh, base. See, even I'm learning something. I did not know the size of your log hut corresponded with your rank. So your lower your rank, the smaller the hut. And then interestingly enough, the way they constructed these um, essentially little, little villages is that the where the enlisted, the lowest enlisted men were bunked in their hut, they made sure that they built the mess hall the farthest away from the enlisted men. So I am now here at the second spot during today's episode that we're checking out, and it is the, essentially the National Memorial Arch. The significance of the location of this arch is this is the exact location where on the evening of December 19th, 1777, Continental troops marched in at Valley Forge. This is where they actually marched in. Right where this arch is, they would have walked right underneath it. So that's the, import, that's the significance of its location. And at the top of the arch, it says, naked and starving as they, are, as they are, we cannot enough admire the incomparable patience and fidelity of the soldiery. George Washington said that here at Valley Forge on f February 16th.
right, so the reason why my last two stops here at Valley Forge kind of go hand in hand is because one is Washington's headquarters and the other, if I can get it in frame, ah, there they are. Oh, no, no, hey, whoop, hey, oh, there they are. Those are his guards' huts. Kind of like the very first original Secret Service, if you will. So if anything, though, if anything were to go seriously wrong in the middle of the night, you need to run from there all the way to there. Honestly, God, it's not that far. It's maybe, I don't know, 100 yards, football field maybe, if that, maybe 90. So now the third of uh, four locations I'm checking out today here at Valley Forge is what is used to be really widely known as the Isaac Potts House, but it is now more commonly known as Washington's headquarters during, during the winter of Valley Forge of 77 to 78. And what's weird, what's crazy enough is that they've done a bunch of archeological digs here, a bunch of research. And if you look, obviously, right? The bigger portion of this house, of the Isaac Potts house, has been altered minimally since 1777. Now the original house was built in 1773. Uh, by the Potts family, by Isaac Potts himself, who was a co-owner of the actual forge of Valley Forge. Now, you may be guessing who would have lived in that house during the time Washington was here. Well, it would have been, obviously, the commander-in-chief himself, as uh, so some of his aide-de-camp, such as John Lawrence, John Lawrence and Alexander Hamilton, two slaves living with them as well inside the house that were um, by the name of Elizabeth Thompson and Hannah Till but everyone lived and worked together all in that same house, which is pretty progressive for that time period, I might say. So now I'm walking the 100 yards from Washington's headquarters, or the Isaac Potts house, over to where his uh, Continental Guards would have lived in these huts. Commander-in-Chief's Guards, an elite security force. Yeah, they would have to be, I would imagine. Washington required that each lifeguard, as they called themselves, to be a native-born American. It was assumed such men would be loyal as they had vested interest in the success of the war. So, George Washington's lifeguards, as they were, as they called themselves, the ancestors of today's 3rd Infantry Regiment, which um, guard the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in D.C. One hut that's open, we're going to go in and check out their living quarters. Probably not going to be great. Just a hunch. One, two, three triple wooden bunk beds. And there are four sets in here for 12 guys. So you got 12, 12 grown men living in here. Oh boy. You got a little fire pit. Yeah, you're gonna want that. It's Valley Forge, right? Winter 1777, 1778. You got it, you got about it's longer than 100 yards. I lied. It's, I don't know, not by much though, 120 yards tops. March 11th, 1776, General Washington planted the seeds of a rich and illustrious military tradition. This military unit, officially known as the Commander-in-Chief's Guards, had the honor and responsibility of protecting General Washington and his baggage. So that is uh, essentially all I can do at Valley Forge today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Running Down History. And if you did, make sure you smash that subscribe button. It really helps me out, helps the channel out. Also, give the episode a thumbs up and comment down below what type of history you'd like to see on the channel. Again, I'll see you all next week at the same time, same day, same channel.